everyone and welcome to another episode of Rascal's Chick Chat for Muscular Development. I am joined today by another Brit. I'm not favourite, I'm not um, playing favourites here at all, it's just the way it's happened because we had Emma Hindman on and um, today we have got Carly Thornton who is or was the very first women's physique pro in the UK, that's right isn't it? Yeah. Because I, I was following closely. Trust You're me. Right. You're right up my backside. <laughs> I, I was stalking, stalking Instagram for weeks before that. So um, thank you for joining us. It's going to be, I know it's going to be a fun-filled chat for sure. Because anyone that doesn't know Carly, um, she's got a very big personality. She's been in the industry since it started. <laughs> Because you just seem to have been around for years. Can you stop showing me, show me age? <laughs> <laughs> but you do seem like you've been competing for years, don't you? Like, even when I first started, I remember you were with USN. That's yeah. right, isn't it? And, and um, you were like the poster girl. You were everywhere, all over all the advertisements. So you were like really well established, even like when I first started. Yeah, like, and then it just went, <laughs> no, but you, I mean, we'll get to this, but you've, you've kind of progressed and changed and developed and your sort of identities changed, hasn't it, as you've gone along, but yeah. we'll get to that, but for people that don't know much about you, can you give us like a little sort of rundown of kind of where you come from and how you've got into competing and, and sort of the timeline? Yeah, well, I started competing in 2008, um, so oh, over 10 years ago now. Yeah. Um, before that, I didn't start training until I was about 21, just a general gym bunny. Um, I used to hate any cardio, cardio, any kind of exercise at all before then. Um, and I hate saying the word cliche because it's so, it is that, it's that whole, I woke up one morning, I hated the way I looked. And I thought the only the only person that can change anything about me is myself. Mm. So that's when I started. Um, I joined the local gym, um, heading the room to do cardio. Um, I just wanted to look like Britney Spears, basically. I wanted <laughs> Britney Spears' abs. You do have that that blonde, because uh, like when you were with USN as well, you were like the proper girl, the golden girl, weren't you? The yeah. girl next door, yeah. <laughs> I know. So then, obviously, I went from. Britney Spears to this jacked, jacked girl. So I don't really know what happened in between. Yeah, yeah. yeah so like, I started in 2008. Um, that was my first show. First of all, my it was a guy from the gym. He was a PT and he just said to me, oh, you know, you're really strong. Uh, I was strong for a girl. Yeah. Well, strong anyway. Um, and you should compete. And I, I didn't even know what that meant. So I was Googling it. And I was like, oh, this sounds pretty cool. You know, maybe I'll give it a go, as you, <laughs> as you do. Yeah. Um, and then that's in 2008 when I first did my first show. I won the Kent show. Um, and then I went on to the British and came second at the British. And, and that I was in figure. Yeah, yeah, body fitness, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 When you um, used to have the swimsuit. Yes. The, the one piece. And you had... To, you had um, the black two piece yeah. and the one piece. Yeah. And you had to wear black court shoes as well. Yeah. They were um, horrible. <laughs> yeah, but the one pieces did nothing for you either. No. No. They were horrible. Mm. But, um, yeah, so that was my first year. And then I competed um, in Bratislava in 2009. Um, and then after that, I didn't compete for three years. Um, Why was that because, then? Um. <sighs> Well, basically, when because I was very new to everything, and um, I don't really know how to put it, really. Well, I'll just say it. Well, I, as soon as I got backstage, I saw all the women. They were very muscular, and it actually put me off. Uh, um, it actually scared me a little bit because... You didn't like the look I, at that time. No. Oh, no, no. And as soon as I competed, um, I actually... Went, went home and I stopped training. Wow. Um, 
But what a like, funny, because it's normally the opposite, isn't it? You compete and then you can't wait to get bigger. You can't wait to get better. And Yeah, I, I think it's because, you know, like when you start, you're so oblivious to it all. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, I was this kind of airhead kind of, you know, just, oh, my God, this is amazing, you know, kind of thing. And I didn't really know what any of it actually involved. Mm. So when, when I was on this high from placing first at my first show, coming second at the British and, you know, all this kind of hype. And then I went to uh, another country where, you know, the Europeans, they take everything very seriously anyway. Yeah. And they've been training at a young age. So their training is their life, isn't it? They start from such a young age. Um, and I just didn't, I didn't realise how serious bodybuilding was um, until obviously I went there and, it, it did. It scared me because, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't have anyone around me that, you know, was in the actual industry. So, yeah, I stopped training for a while. Um, and then I, I focus on, like, magazine work and kind of um, writing articles and everything. And yeah. it wasn't until, oh, my God, it wasn't until 2012 um, I decided to compete again. So Wow. Yeah, and that was. Even though I've been competing for uh, like ten years, I haven't really. As yeah, such. yeah. So you've done really well, haven't you? Like you, it, really. It, apart from the the three years, in a reasonably condensed amount of time, yeah. uh, competing wise, you progress yeah. pretty fast. Um, yeah. And also to go from the figure or body fitness, and then transition over to women's physique. Yeah. And like go straight in and win your pro card, uh, you know it was like th there was like a couple of other girls that were kind of like you know like ho waiting and hoping we'd been trying like a bit longer. So I mean it was amazing, amazing achievement to to, to just jump in and, and get that pro card. Yeah, it was, it was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty bizarre to be fair because I'd never actually. Um, thought about getting my pro card until later on competing. Yeah, uh, it was actually when um, when I met my uh, when I when I met Luke. Yeah, and he was talking about getting his pro card, and um, I was like, yeah, you know, we've got it, but now you like, kind of get serious. I want things. one too. Yeah, anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> Did you get your pro card before him? I did. No. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so that's just crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Amazing. But, um, yes. So that was uh, in 2012. I competed again, um, and it was 2015, wasn't it? In, no, 2014. I competed, but I actually that show. I'd actually tried to lose a little bit of size. Because um, I, they said to me I was slightly too big, or I'm like borderline. So the, the funny thing is, I tried to, I didn't train to gain any muscle. Yeah. That, but I walked on stage heavier. <laughs> um, just you know what? It's, it's inevitable, isn't it? If you if you train hard, you train heavy. Yeah. Um, you progress. Yeah. Um, so that's when they said, you know, you should transition to woman's physique. Yeah. I was devastated, first of all. Yeah, you know, I remember. I, rem uh, I remember. I, I think maybe I was at maybe I was at the show and I remember there was like people were sort of saying, oh, Carly's been moved, Carly's been moved. And I remember like you were upset about it because you hadn't prepared for the po the poses. No. You'd never learned like, them. I had this dream of being a figure girl. Yeah. You know, and it was, that was the whole thing of being in shoes and feeling more girly and um, then it wasn't until I think it was about a week out a week out from the Arnold that's when I was like right I'm going to change I'm going to transition and I'm going to do woman's physique at the Arnold so I had about a week to practice um and when I started doing the poses I was like oh my god I love it <laughs> it's just it was so bizarre from, from thinking oh I, I'm not going to like it to I absolutely loved it I love the the how you can actually show off your physique yeah. for the first time ever because whenever I've walked on stage, I've had to down pose and not tense, not well, not really tense uh, pose at all. Yeah, because I've always been scared of being too big. Yeah, 
Um, so now I was like, oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's nice because of the poses for women's physique are very feminine. Yeah, they're um, really, be they're really beautiful them. poses, aren't they? They're... Yeah, and I think, I think because you have more muscle and they can, you know, come across as quite masculine poses if you're doing them in a certain way. Yeah. I you kind of you lap that up a little bit more and you make it a bit more sassier than you probably would have done in a, a lower category anyway yeah 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 there's a lot of uh, flourish yeah to the posing yeah, especially yourself because you're a dancer i've got yeah. two left feet i don't know how i did it <laughs> you look really good but you practiced a lot didn't you you yeah. put a lot of time into kind of like the fine tuning and all this sort yeah. of thing you do a little bit of posing coaching now as well don't you yeah, I do some pose. I do, I, I do some personal training and I do the the posing, but I do prefer the posing. Um, yeah. I just love, I love the body. I love watching it move and and how you can actually, you know, just change someone else's physique by yeah. just even like like a small foot stance or something. Yeah. Uh, I do have a lot of men's physique poses, um, guys. Actually, to be fair. Yeah. Compared to any other category, <laughs> and uh, the funny thing was when I was doing them, um, I was practicing with a guy, and a guy at the gym he said to me, "Oh, you're very good at this men physique poses, aren't you?" I said, "You know what? I am practicing my ass off so I can get men like this down the gym naked." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ulterior motive there. Really an old, old age pervert. <laughs> <laughs> so now. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but you've decided to step away from being a competitor yourself. This is right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I decided that um, oh, last year um, when I did my last show in June, I think it was. It was a Vancouver show. It was either June or July. I can't actually remember now. Um, and I was in the best condition, the best shape I've ever been in my life. Yeah. Uh, I just... I love the way I looked then. Um, and then when I when I got feedback, the feedback was that my upper body needed to be bigger. Um, basically, I needed my upper body bigger, but I had to stop training legs as much because um, obviously the, the symmetry wise um, wasn't complete. And they're, to, well, they're basically two things I didn't want to do. I didn't want my upper body any bigger and I didn't want to stop training legs. Yeah. So it kind of defeated the object of me competing because then I would hate my training. Um, and I didn't want to be bigger anyway because uh, it's when, about one. It's about looking the way you're going to feel happy with, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Because I mean, even even doing that show, um, I had to force feed myself so much to gain that size anyway. Um, like I was eating, I was eating every two or three hours, but the amount that I was consuming, I I felt sick. Um, so it was like even the, the next meal came and I felt that I hadn't digested my last meal. Ooh. It was just horrible. And I, I went up to like 180 pounds um, on 5.5 five, five, five I am. And that's like... <gasps> that's, that's a lot of weight, That's isn't a it? lot of weight. <laughs> I was looking through photos on Facebook. Oh, my God. <clears throat> wow. I was a beast. Um, but you always... Uh, when I see pictures of you... You always look quite tall. You, yeah. even when you've been at your biggest, you never looked like, like really. It didn't look uncomfortable. I've got quite long limbs, I think. I have got a long torso. I think you I held think. it well, even though you know you were quite heavy for, for five foot yeah. five. You you you're not as tall as what you look. Yeah. On on like social media and stuff. Oh, that's photoshopping, isn't it? Yeah, so I didn't, after being, after a year of feeling so uncomfortable that way, and I didn't feel attractive at all, but I was doing it for the show, um, and obviously I knew that I had to gain weight to progress. Yeah. Um, but when, when I was told that, you know, I'd have to have my upper body bigger, I was like, no way. No way. So it's not. It's not something I want to live with anyway. Um, yeah. And I've always been at the, you know, the the thought of, you know, I I, I will always walk on stage the way I want to look. I don't. If they tell me that I need to be softer, lean, or whatever, I'm always going to walk on how I want to look because yeah. um, 
you 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 could go on stage and you could go on how they want you to look and still not play. So yeah. it doesn't make any difference anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to, as I said, I didn't want to get any bigger. So I decided um, to call competing a day and help other people um, compete with posing and then bring out obviously my clothing business. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll happens. we'll come to the clothing. I want to talk about the clothing and the kind of business and entrepreneurship entrepreneurial side a little bit in a little bit because I'm really really interested in that progression of your personality and stuff but when you decided to stop competing did you find that you hit any sort of mental uh, challenges with this did you feel like it was a hard decision did you feel like there was any like searching for a new identity because it was Around the same sort of time that you, you and Luke had split as well, hadn't you? Yeah. So there were so many things it's happening. Yeah. Was it like a, a bit of an explosion for you, or did you feel like you just kind of faced it quite easily? Oh, I'd like to say I faced it quite easily because we're all strong, but at the same time, that um, that that was just so much to go through at the same time. Yeah. Um, it was kind of the split. Um, the kind of it made me decide not to compete because I was kind of still living in this bubble um, of oh you know I want to be you know I want to be one of the best and you know I could earn money out of it and I was never realistic with it um, because I think we all want that what guys can get out of it and um, because just, just to let people know, because um, it was Luke Sandow, uh, the British IB, IFBB pro that you were you were with, and he's kind of gone on to get good contracts and stuff, hasn't he? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so he, he um, got all there, and he's done what he's still doing, absolutely yeah. amazing now. Um, and because of, because of the, the, the split, and then I decided not to compete, I just, I just felt like, I kind of had to find myself again. Yeah. I felt lost. Um, I felt confused. Um, I did. I did, I just felt like I was starting my life again. And because because of everyone you kind of follow um, is into bodybuilding, and obviously because that's what you were into, I just felt all of a sudden I felt alone. Yeah. I felt like I had no one, and it's the first time that I actually felt, God, it is a lonely sport. Like, you don't realise when you're in it because you're still following people, you're still talking to people saying, oh, how's your diet getting on? And so you feel like you've got all these friends yeah, and such. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as soon as you step away from that, you realise how lonely it is. Yeah. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful for everything that did happen with myself and Luke because it actually made me realise pretty quick what I, I need to sort myself out it's kind of um just looking from the outside I've seen all the changes yeah. and it's almost like it's catapulted you into this um kind of like just self-growth just yeah. seems like you're doing yeah. doing so well and and sort of searching I I honestly feel like I can kind of like resonate with a lot of the things that I see in you with yeah. where I am now, um, yeah. deciding to stop competing. And it's like, you do, you feel like you're starting from scratch. And um, it's like, I noticed that you, some people think this is so stupid, but I noticed that you had all your hair cut off. Yeah. And I did this, like recently, I oh, just yes, cut. You have, and you've got a fringe. Yeah, cut all it's mine off, got my fringe, it's all tied yeah. back. But I think there's something in that where you just like, you know, who the fuck am I? Right, I'm going to cut my hair yeah. off and start, yeah. you know. And it's, it's like a Madonna, isn't it? Yeah, or uh, Britney Spears yeah. when she um, shaved her head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, re you know, reinventing yourself. Um, yeah. And I, like, I don't know, I think it's a, a, a good thing, isn't it? To have this big change and it just yeah. forces you to kind of search a little bit outside of just bodybuilding as well. Um, did it does because I think I think you get so consumed. Like maybe not everyone does, but I think ma majority of people do, and you don't realise how consumed you get into something. 
and I became quite a selfish person. Mm. Um, and I didn't realise how I was until I stepped out of it. And I, and that's when I transitioned to things. You know, I started meditating more. Um, I started just getting to know the person I am because I didn't know who I was. And st I'm still getting to know me now. Um, and it is that transition of, you know, becoming a better person, isn't it? Yeah. Because I think where where you are competing and that is the only thing you're thinking about, you're not, I'm, not, I'm not thinking about my friends. I'm not thinking about family. Um, I push loved ones away. Um, so it's just because of everything that's happened, I know how I can be better now. Yeah. So um, it's everything, as I said, you know, it's like everything happens for a reason. And I wouldn't change anything because um, it's just helped me to progress for the person I am now. Yeah. And um, you've been doing them um, because you put out loads of content on your um, social media and you are really good at talking. I don't know whether you feel confident, yeah. um, but you certainly come across that way. You know, maybe that's part of that self growth, self development. Um, but I mean, you, you're certainly putting stuff out there to help people. There's loads of like information about training and all this kind of thing. And like you say, now you've got time and energy because we were ch chatting just earlier before we, we went live, just saying that when you're competing, your priority is training mm. and everything else comes second to it. So what's it, what was it like now to just have all that energy and everything? You've set up this new business. Tell us about how you've set up this new business, Gluteware, how much of your time each day this takes and what new skills you've kind of had to um, develop to make this a success? Oh, well, I think uh, when it started in December, I brought the brand out um, and it kind of spiraled from there. I think really it's been more well known probably for about four months, I would say. Yeah. Um, but most of my energy goes on that. I don't train as much anymore. Um, I've, I didn't realise how little training you actually have to do to actually keep it. To maintain, yeah. It's crazy, yeah. isn't it? It's ridiculous. You, like, you go a little bit softer looking and a bit flatter, yeah. and then you go in the gym and train, and it's like, oh, it's still there. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. I, I mean, just saw, like, a bit of my like, pec. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> still there. Still there. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You suffocate me all the way from there. <laughs> but it's even like um, eating. Like the, for the first time this year, I don't weigh my food. Yeah. I just eat when I eat. Um, and like I haven't done that since well, since 10 years. I've weighed my food for 10 years. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's off season or not. I've always been... I suppose, like, you kind of build a little bit of a bad relationship with food, don't you? Because yeah. you feel like, oh, my God, everything has to be weighed. I can't yeah. go out shopping if I haven't got food. And, oh, my God, look at the time. But also, it's the other thing that I'm trying to get out of is because you're used to eating every two hours. Yeah. It's that kind of, uh, like, feeling that you need to eat all the time. Yes. So that's something, yeah. like, I'm trying to work on where I get to the point that, I could go five, six hours and I might feel hungry, but you don't have to eat. Like, yeah. you don't yeah. need to eat so so often, yeah. you know? It's, I think it's training yourself because I, it was just one day I was driving. I don't I can't remember what I was driving. Amino Spark is a branch chain amino drink. It's got electrolyte blend in there to keep you hydrated when you're training or doing your cardio. The BCAAs is to stop you going catabolic. It's also got matcha green tea in it, which is good for focus, energy and fat loss. And the amazing ingredient ashwagandha, which reduces cortisol, lowering anxiety. You can use Amino Spark any time of the day. Sometimes I have it in my water just because it tastes nice. But it's great for fasted cardio and also intra-workout. It's a 420 gram pouch. Each serving is 14 grams, so that gives you 30 servings. You can purchase these online at my website, rosierascal.com. Go to the shop, you can get one pouch for $24.99 plus shipping costs, or you can get two for $42.99 with the shipping included. And that way you can get one of each flavor. You can get the cola cube and the pineapple and kiwi cooler. Enjoy. I just stopped, I was like, oh, I can't 
I was like, oh my God, I haven't prepared any food. Yeah. And I just had this little, this like a freedom all of a sudden. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was like, I feel alive. <laughs> burn, burn all the Tupper, Tupperware boxes. <laughs> It's like you wanted to get out of the car and tell everyone, <laughs> food with me. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone would just like wind the windows up quickly and drive off. <laughs> but it isn't now, it's just, I don't, I don't think about it. Um, I just, eat, I, I probably don't eat like a, say, normal person, but I still, I still don't, I don't weigh any of my food. Um, if I don't eat for, you know, half a day, I, I just haven't eaten. Do you have know what you, I mean? If I'm uh, having a busy day. Yeah. Have you tried like cutting your protein down and stuff like this? Or? Yeah. Yeah. My protein, I don't eat as much protein. Main, mainly I eat carbs. Yeah. Um, that's my main source now. I still have protein, but I don't probably half the, yeah, half the amount that yeah. I was. What kind of amount of protein did you used to take like when you were like prepping? Um, it was around about. 35, 35 um, grams of protein per meal. Yeah. And I was six meals. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, mine was, yeah. Mine was something <laughs> similar. I, I mean, like I went up to, because if you're going low carbs, low fats, uh, protein sort of becomes your only yeah. supply of energy. And I was like up to like 250 gram of protein a lot of the yeah. time a day. And I'm like, I don't, I mean, I, weigh nothing i just weigh you know like 100 pounds or something stupid you look tiny as well because in photos you look so much bigger don't you yeah everyone always thinks i'm tall yeah and like really <laughs> muscular whereas yeah. when, when you see you're still very petite yeah really tiny yeah. tiny but yeah so business glutey wear yeah so going from like athlete and before did you used to be a care worker yeah, I was many, many years ago. Um, for ten years. Yeah, um, wow. Looking for disabled children. Wow. I did that just before USN. So I think I left. Um, I think I left the care around about two thousand and ten. Wow, and did that? Is that something that you studied at college then? Like you? Have, yeah, yeah, I did it. I did uh, my um, A levels um, for health and social care. Um. And yeah, I loved it, and I, mm. I still love it now. Um, just, it just wasn't financially. It it was so up and down because I did a lot of it was more like agency work, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there was a month that they didn't have any work because the the child um, uh, either went on holiday or passed away, or you know, there was always some kind of something was happening. So it wasn't stable. Um, and it was so it was emotionally draining. Um, so I, I did do it for ten years, um, and then after that, that's when I went because I didn't have work for a month. That's when USN was like, "Oh, we've got a sales role." So then um, I was employed by USN as well as a sponsored athlete. Wow! I got into sales. So um, yeah, totally different. Cool. Totally different. Yeah, I know, so different. So like, I think because. I was very, very good at sales, and the only reason I was good at sales is because I'm good at talking. Yeah. Um, apart from that, I'm not good at sales. <laughs> well, they say that people buy into the person and not the product, don't they? Yeah. So if if you kind of build rapport with whoever's selling, people are going to buy buy into the product. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I remember when I used to go into um, a gym. I would normally go in my gym gear and, um, you know, sell uh, the products as soon as I put a skirt and a, and a USN um like a, a jacket on they were like whoa <laughs> you know because you you all of a sudden look like a salesperson don't you? <laughs> with the hair like perfectly parted yeah, I loved it I loved it yeah. the tight long skirt yeah <laughs> amazing amazing so what's your kind of um long-term goals with the glutey wear then um, I want it. Well, my vision is it for to be the fastest growing female fitness brand yeah. in the UK. Can um, you tell us a little bit about the the range and where they can people why the the designs of the the leggings and so on and where people can find them? The, the leggings they they've got um, a ruched bum. Yeah. Uh, so 
basically they enhance your curves. They're um, really, really nice. They, they, Carly sent me a pair and the quality is really nice. They're like, yeah. they're thick enough that they're not going to wear, you know, yeah. when you're squatting and training all the time. They're, they're really nice quality. Yeah, they're, they're, they're quite silky as well. Yeah. And, uh, well, basically, it was just because for years and years and years, because of my, how my physique is, I've got muscular legs, but my waist is smaller. So I never was be able to find a pair of leggings that fitted my legs and my waist, or they were see-through, or yeah. um, they fell down. So it was, I wanted to, for over a year, I thought about bringing out a brand and everything, but it never, you know, you have them thoughts, don't you, but you, you never put it into an action. Yeah. And then everything was going a bit pear-shaped in my life. I was just like, you know what, I'm going to do it. Now's so the time. It, yes, and then that's when I had to, you know, it, when I first got the brand out, I was so anxious because you're kind of like, I love it, but will anyone else like it? And it's that kind of thing, isn't it? Um, but, yeah, it's really good. We've got 12, 12 different colours out. No, 13 colours probably by the time this comes out. Yeah. Um, we've, I've got two more sports bras coming. I've got... Um, I've got uh, winter winter clothes coming. <gasps> nice. Um, yeah. Keep those sales pants. going up in the winter too. Yeah. <laughs> in England, isn't it? Bring out but some woolly hats. Really exciting um, uh, product coming even. Yeah. Uh, so that will be coming soon, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, we're also doing, we're doing the, obviously the two bros, the, the fitness event. Yeah, uh, we're going to be doing Body Power next year, um, and I'm also doing a fashion event this year as well. Amazing! So we're, Is that yes, going to be like I'm fitness just, based or like uh, completely fashion? Completely wow! Fashion. Yeah, so it's um, so. Completely. Is there going to be like some like local designers and things yeah, like that? Uh, it's in it's in London. It's like um, it's a uh, some kind of fashion week. I don't know overly too much about it yet, but we've just started looking into it um, this late of last week, um, and they spoke to us about it. They want us there, so that will be really good. Really looking forward to that, just because it's something different. Yeah. It's a different venue. Yeah. Um, and I want to progress into the, you know, the the athleisure of because I wear leggings with heels. Yeah. Um, I'm in leggings, so I want to. Um, show that you can and a lot of people do wear leggings every day now for yeah. going shopping going for coffee um, not yeah. just at the gym so yeah they can look glam they can look yeah. really glam I, I always used to go out in leggings especially especially when it was like off season I remember you out clubbing I, yeah, I did. Tight leggings with your bum like this. I was like, oh, my God, I've got a bum. Yeah, <laughs> that did. I used to go out clubbing in either, if it was off-season, it'd be leggings and a vest. Yes. No, I remember little boob tubes you used to wear. Yeah, boob tubes. Yeah. If it was, um, I, I've even been out before. I used to buy kids, uh, like, say, age 10 swimming costume. Nice. Yeah, and then I would cut it up. And wear the top half and then the bottom half and then just high heels <laughs> and like a pair of ankle warmers or something. It's crazy. But I tell you what, though, like I look back at that time in my life and it was pretty wild. But the one thing that I wish I still had was the, the attitude of just not giving a shit about what anyone else thought about me. Yeah. I just couldn't yeah. have cared less. Um, I, I don't think like I think about what other people think a lot now, but I think as I've got older, like I worry more, you know? Yeah. Well, see, I worry about different things because now I'm, I'm 37 and I'm, well, I'll be 38 in January. So nearly 38 now, aren't I? Really? I'm nearly OAP. <laughs> I'm, I worry about, probably more business yeah. than I do actually other people now. Yeah. Uh, but they do say, don't they, there's progressions in life that when you kind of, you start not giving a fuck about other, what other people think um, because you realise that they actually don't care about you as much as you think they do. Yeah, for sure. Like, like you know, people will say, um, 
like say, sometimes people worry about uh, what they post on social media and they're worried about other people, what they think. But the reality is other people look at it and then they forget about it and don't yeah. think about it again. They go home and they've got their own problems. Yeah. They're not sat thinking about me or like <laughs> yeah. someone else. That, know, you know. Me, was. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Why is no one thinking about me anymore? <laughs> I must admit, though, I used to, I used to be like that. I used to be like, oh my god, you know, I haven't got many likes on this picture, so I delete it. <laughs> yeah. you know? It's like, oh my, you know, when you yeah. just look back at it. Thinking, what was I thinking? Yeah, because you see that sometimes, don't you? You see someone's posted something and then you yeah. go back and it's gone, and yeah. you're like, Why have they deleted it? They're probably devastated, they're probably crying at home thinking that they're not liked. I know, I was going back to like it if they'd have left it on. <laughs> <laughs> so because you've been doing a little bit of stuff as well, more like uh, mind work, haven't you? Like you've been kind of getting interested in, like you say, you do the meditation and stuff. And yeah. you did like a seminar for mental health as well, didn't you? Yeah. A, a few weeks yeah. ago. That was really good. That was really good. Um, speaking about openly about obviously the way um, I deal with things and how I've um, had different situations of obviously um, coping with anxiety. And I believe that we all have some form of anxiety. It's just how we learn to control it. Um, so, yeah, that was really good, speaking to a lot of people openly and getting their opinions on what they do. Yeah. Um, and so it was really, it was really nice, um, really good. What's some of the, the ways that you use then? Like, because you're so busy now, everything's like a lot of pressure probably. Um, you know, a new business, the first year is usually like the most stressful. Like, other than the meditation, what other kind of things have you found helpful for you? Um, well, I have a business coach. Yeah. Um, I have a coach now. Um, it's not something I thought about, first of all. And then I actually sat back. I always go back to bodybuilding. Um, because it's taught me so much. And I just thought, I paid X amount for a coach for bodybuilding. Why the hell am I not doing it for business? Yeah, investing like, in your sense. financial security, invest in yeah. that now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I, I did because, you know, I'm not, um, I, I, I've got, you know, like you have so many visions and so much you want to do, but you don't know how to do it. Yeah, because you've so, never done it before. So, no. yeah. So it's kind of having that someone else to say, um, like, slow down, you know. It's it's more of a mental thing as well, isn't it? Yeah, and I think, no. actually, you're doing a really, really good job because your um, social media is amazing. It's really, really slick. It's, um, like, on your linked uh, page as well. Mm -hmm. Very, very consistent. Everything's slick yeah it's really really good oh thank you it's, it's getting there i think yeah. i think it's just a work in progress isn't it yeah um and i think I, I mean even looking back on the first ever pair of leggings makes me kind of cringe now yeah because yeah it's like anything isn't it? it's like your first show yeah you know? i got look at me <laughs> yeah 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 but, um yeah, I mean, it, it's, going, it's going really well. Um, so I'm just, that's the main thing I'm focused on at the moment. Looking at different lines, looking at different athletes, and just looking at how I can improve as a person, not just the business, yeah. but in life. And it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to focus more on actually being happy. Yeah. Um, because that's a, that's a big thing. Because I think, I think when you have so much going on around you and, what you've had in the past um <clears throat> it's just knowing how what actual happiness is yeah yeah because like you, you know you you're right i used to think that oh you know when i've got this much money i'll buy this and when i've got this i'll buy this but it's not to do with that because then even when you bought it you still feel empty because yeah. it's not that's not that's happiness. not where the happiness it's comes product. from yeah yeah so, i think uh, this um this is like really the same as how I'm feeling right now. I feel like there's been such a big shift because for years my desires were all about being 
the best bodybuilder. It was yeah. all about gaining respect from people, um, being like a champion and and competitive. And then all of a sudden, I just realized that none of that meant anything to me. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden, I was like, all I want is calm, happiness, and fulfillment. Mm. And competing doesn't give me that. Yeah. So like you say, it's just kind of searching and, and it's kind of filtering out all the things. I actually have a tick list now so that if I get any opportunities for work or various things, I kind of tick, does it make me happy? Does it make me healthy? Does it fulfill me? That's a good me? idea. That's, yeah, yeah it's a really good because idea. otherwise you can slip into old habits of going yeah. for things that you would normally go for, or you can like the the ego can kind of take over. Oh, you know, that's going to make know, me look I, good. Yes, I know that one. It, it is, isn't it? or someone asks you to do something, and you think, oh, that that would be good because um, they would appreciate that. So if they appreciate, other people appreciate that, yeah. and you're not actually thinking about it's not for you. Else. It's not and for it's, you. That's still an ego thing, isn't it? Yeah, the, yeah, the ego, yeah. Instead of it is learning to say no. Yeah. And I did that for the first time with a client. Um, I actually turned around and said, "I don't think I, I, I don't think I'm right for you." Yeah. And I, I've never done that before because you always feel that you know you have to say yes to everyone. Yeah. But in reality. You know what it's like. We're we're not all compatible with each other. And if you want to actually be successful in I don't know PT or posing or any business, um, you you just can't be saying yes because you you're not going to be respected, are you? Because it's not just about money. Yeah. Like I don't want to just take someone's money, and I don't want to work with them anyway. No, because you know it's going to end end in disaster. <laughs> Yeah, in a few you, months you, you haven't got that passion to help that person as much have you yeah and yeah that might sound really harsh but yeah um at least you're being honest with them yeah so and then yeah they can, they can no. off and find someone else. <laughs> give someone else like a, a year of hell <laughs> i am a nice person really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the coaching is stressful yeah. it's really stressful even when you get someone that you have got rapport with um you know, and like some people are really, really needy. They need a lot of the, a lot of attention. Um, so yeah, I think that's really good to figure out who you are compatible with. You know, and and not just say yes because it's like oh, like don't want to say no because it it's an up and down business. Sometimes you you can have a lot of clients and then it goes a bit quiet. So yeah, it, it is like that, isn't it? I think everyone. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, I mean, my, as I say, my main focus is the the, the booty wear yeah. and leggings, building building the brand up. Um, I think it's and again, I'm going to say it again. I I have to keep on going back to bodybuilding and how long it takes to build muscle because yeah. you know it's one of the things you you don't you you always think, am I doing well? You know, it's that kind of clarification, isn't it? Because with bodybuilding. You know that muscle takes time. Yeah. When it's like a brand, as you know, um, how long does it take? You yeah. don't know, do you? Yeah. So you don't actually know. I know I'm saying you don't know where you're supposed to be at. Yeah. But it is, at least with training, you kind of know more yeah. than obviously something else. And that's with that, that's the thing that gives me anxiety. Yeah. Because it's feeling of because you've got your own business, I could wake up one morning and it might be all gone. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's the anxiety that you you kind of cope with. Um, but then now I've got the mentality of if I can do it once, then I can do it again. So, yeah. um, you know, and if it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's um, now what I'm doing with, with, I know that I can still get low days and everything, but I know why I get them. Um, I know that, say there's been a situation, I know that for four days I might not feel myself. Yeah. Um, and it's that knowing um, that you feel like that because of X, Y, or Z. Yeah. And instead of just being like, oh, I'm having a really shit time at the moment, don't know why, 
that's a difference between someone who knows how to cope with and control the situation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm where I'm at now. I'm actually I'm actually working with my emotions and yeah. understanding why I'm going through them. Yeah. And I understand that it will take a few days. And just just to remember that it's always temporary. You know, yeah. like the good days and the bad days, they're always temporary. So just to kind of ride it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like competing, isn't it? You know, yeah. you have you have your days that you really can't be bothered to do anything, and the next day you're high on life. Yeah. Um, it's like anything, isn't it? So I think that's why I think bodybuilding was really good because it taught me that no, not every day is going to be perfect. Yeah, for sure. Like bodybuilding like, teaches you um, all these amazing skills that you yeah. can apply to many other things in life like business relationships anything you know um and that's the amazing thing with where you're at now you can kind of take the framework of how you became successful as a bodybuilder and apply that yeah it's just like a pattern isn't it that you can yeah. can use the same plan yeah yeah exactly so just to do a little bit of work every day keep yeah. disciplined uh, persistent. It, if, you, if you think about it, when we're bodybuilding, all we're doing is eating. We're training, say, for an hour a day, yeah. and that's what's getting the result. Yeah. So it's like it's like work. It's you know, like I I was I at the stage first of all, I was at the stage of if I if I'm sitting here not working, say I'm talking to you now, like oh my god, I need to be working. You know, I start feeling guilty. Yeah. So I'd be waking up in the morning feeling like I had to do something until I go to bed. Um, and then I'll, most of the day I'll be procrastinating because I feel like I've got so much to do. And then I end <laughs> yeah. up doing nothing. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, it's all crap. Oh. But, uh, now it's, it's, it's taking that step back. And I'm still, this is what I'm still working with now, is to know that it's not how much you do, it's how productive you are in them two hours. So if yes. you have two hours of your day, that you're super productive, and the rest of the day you do nothing, it doesn't matter because you've been more productive than you was in yeah. that whole 12 hours. Yeah, there's no point. I think like some people, they, they want to show that they're working all the time. It's like they're up at 4 o'clock every morning, they don't go to bed till 12, and it's like, but are you just like running around, like not really getting anything done, do you know what I mean? Surely it's better to be time efficient yeah. You know, so. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to um, let you go now, Carly, because you'll be getting anxiety wanting to get some work done. <laughs> but I need to have a bath. Yay. Yeah, you, you look a bit, you look like you need a good scrub. Yeah. Though. <laughs> but if you, um, before we leave, have you got anything, one last sort of parting sort of bit of advice for anyone? Maybe it's something that you have like a daily mantra, something that you always kind of think um, that could help other people, whether it's people that want to compete in bodybuilding or just people that want to kind of get out there and do something. Maybe they're scared of uh, trying something new. Um, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a big one. <laughs> things all in one go there. Um, it's a big well, question. I, mean, I, have a, I do have a daily routine now. I do wake up. I do walk the dog. I listen to a gratitude meditation while I'm walking the dog. Yeah. I come back home and I write three things that I'm grateful for. Um, I do that every day. That's just part of my routine now before I do absolutely anything because it sets me up mentally for the day. Um, so that's what I do now. And when it comes to bodybuilding or competing, um, it's just what everyone else says: don't don't rush and be be yourself. You know, just just focus on your goals and don't look at too many other people, even though that's all well and said done because we all do it. But the more energy you waste on someone else, the less energy you're putting towards yourself. Um, so just just keep the focus on yourself. Oh, who was that? Was that Giles? <laughs> he's, mo he's, moving <laughs> he's moving the cat out of the way because the cat... The cat is outside screaming for me because he can't be parted from me for more than a minute. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I, th I think that's it really, isn't it? Just mainly focus on yourself. Yeah. Feel that gratitude and focus on, keep focus. 
yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much, Carly. So that's Carly Thornton. We've had AFBB Pro. Go and check out her Instagram. Check out her glutey wear, amazing clothing. And um, good luck, Carly, with everything. I'm sure you're going to be a great success, as you were with all you competing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy you're here. <laughs> thank you. See you later, Carly. Bye. Is it? Don't worry about it. What's going on here? I'm not having this. What's that? Amino Spark? That's exactly what it is. Amino Spark. Turn around and flex that back. We'll grow old, but we'll stay taunt. And the gym will be there till the end. I'll never be pear-shaped these